So, Anthony Mellor has asked, how do you train your wife so well that you can go fishing as much as I do? The trick is either to have lots of money or a massive Hampton. Now, I haven't, I haven't got a massive Hampton, nor have I got lots of money, so I lie about the amount of money I've got. Or, on the other hand, you could get a girlfriend that doesn't particularly like you, which in my case is exactly the same. So, I lie about my money, and I've got a girlfriend that doesn't particularly like me and likes her own time. The honest answer is, is that I don't actually go fishing that much. Um, I go fishing once a week and she knows that it's my job and my, my passion and my love so she lets me go once a week and that's about it really. Jamie McKeegan has asked um, how, often I'd, how often I'd reel a zig in um, and change the hook bait or the length of the zig. And it's like most questions, it really depends on the situation. Um, if I'm fishing, like I'm, I'm fishing at number one today of Wolverhampton Reservoirs, so there's lots of fish in here. Um, and if I was to put a zig out, I'd expect to bite pretty quickly if I had the, the, the depth right and the, the colour of the hook bait right. Um, so, you know, maybe an, an hour max. If I feel like I'm fishing in maybe 10 foot of water, I'll start at 7 or 8. Um, and if I haven't had a bite, I'll reel in and change the depth before I change the colour of the hook bait. Um, I tend to use either black foam uh, or cork on my zigs. And I'll quite often put two out, not just one, because one can often sit there entangled. Um, so I'll put two out at the same depth, then I'll change one um, and leave one at the same depth. And that way, that if one of them goes, you know exactly what one to change the other rod to. Number one. I'm happy with that. Well, there he is. Nice stow common about 19 pounds, 15 and a half ounces, I reckon. It's very, very close to 20 pounds. I'm over here testing the heli safe system. And it's worked perfectly well. Clipping up to the far margin at about 90 yards. This is the first one of the day. I did lose one, well not lose one, I had a weird occurrence just before it. Everything seems to be working. It's very, very hot, so I think what I'll do is get him back pretty quick. Get the woods back out. Well, unfortunately, that one you saw me playing earlier, I lost at the net. I was messing about with trying to get the net in the water, and I'm quite high on platforms here, and the GoPro was sinking my net, and I just played it like a head, to be fair. Um, so, <laughs> I'm not allowed to say it's probably not. <laughs> got the spud back out there, got the rods back out. It wasn't, this one wasn't too long in coming. This one absolutely beasted me along the far margin. As soon as I hooked into it, it was quieting along about a foot off the bank, and went in about 30, 40 yards up the bank, so unfortunately, we didn't get any footage. Uh, but lovely little cricket bat common. Let me get him back, see if we can catch another one. Joe Lee has asked um, what I would change if I couldn't get the fish competing on the surface um, when I'm surface fishing or when I'm fishing over depth zig. Uh, and the honest answer is, is that I'd, I'd generally just persevere on the surface. If I can see them on the surface, that's how I want to catch them. There's no point in putting a bottom bait out or a, or a zig half depth. Um, when you're not getting them taking mixes because they're all on the top and they're not eating so the chance of getting a bite on the bottom is slim to none so um, I'll persevere on the top just trickle pellets out as little and often don't put loads out because we're obviously not eating that much um, and even sometimes I end up chasing around just with a floater rod just with quite a you know, relatively bright hook like maybe a white, white pop up or a bit of bread on the surface um, and just hope in the end that one of them um, will decide to come up and take your hook bait yeah. I 
look absolutely ridiculous with my brother's hat on and the cream all over my face. But I think I've made up a bit with this carp. It's about 23 pounds, I think, and it absolutely beasted me again along the island margin. I think if I hadn't lost that lead straight away, I wouldn't have got it in because it went straight into a snag. I was in direct contact with the fish and I managed to get it out. So one nil to me, really, with this one. It's an absolute perler. It's boiling hot sea and still. I think it's time for more. Get this one back so we can catch another one. We're fishing the one today, but there's a little tiny river behind here. We put some bait in earlier. My mate down the road said he saw a little common feeding, so put a little bit of bait down there and we've just seen three different carp feeding down there. There's a bream there as well. So I put on a massive bottom bait, a size four rook, and hopefully we can get around the bream and catch a carp. So let's have a little look in here. Come with us. Probably not giving ourselves any favours by standing here, but he's coming back round to the bait. What I'm gonna try and do is just lower it in. There's a little bit of weed right up against its bank and we've got some gravel and then another bit of weed. So I'm just going to lie it on a strip of gravel just this side of the weed. Oh my God, he's going to cut through a hook bait now. I hope you can see all of these. Chris Penny's asked if, um, if I fish slack lines or tight lines when I'm fishing chods in the weed. Um, it makes me cringe when I see people fishing in the weed or with chods in general that, you know, not far out or even up to 60, 70 yards when they've got really tight lines. Because obviously you've got to think that your hook link, or where, where your hook is, is, is fishing this side of the lead. So if your line's really tight and it's picking everything up off the bottom, then your rig isn't presented right. So you've got to make sure you give a little bit of slack just to so the lead core or your, or your, hook, um, your hook length will be able to sink down to the bottom and present it right okay on the bottom. Um, yeah, fish, fishing tight lines with chods just isn't the one for me. I wouldn't fish them really, really slack, um, especially when there's lots of weed about because the, uh, obviously the indication isn't very good. Um, but semi-slack, just enough so your hook bait can sink properly and get good presentation. <laughs> Look at him! That little spot I was, um, I was trying to catch, like that little comment from earlier, I've, uh, I've been, we've been putting bait in there all day and they've sort of come back a little bit and have a little bit of a munch and then go down the river a little bit and then we saw a few of them in there so we put the rod back down, put some more bait out and uh, this one ripped out. I didn't actually see it take the bait even though I could have if I was watching it. But uh, it took me probably 40 yards down the river and we've had to walk over all the brambles. Come, you'll see we're in a completely different place. Um, and this is the result, a lovely little angry mirror. He's probably, he was stocked in there, definitely. He's one of the stockies, but look at that gorgeous mouth. Just epic to catch on out of a little river. Well pleased with that.